key on uh, with uh, some current it stays there I'll find out from the scales later how to figure that is Mm. Increase the voltage scale a bit. Key off. No current. Key on. No current. Key off for more than five seconds. I think that's more than five seconds. I'm going to turn the key on again. Key on again. Nothing. Try to crank the engine. Uh, engine cuts out. And uh, uh, there's a bit of current flow there. Am I using DC? a minute I need to change my settings here I need to be sure I'm in yeah I'm in DC I'm in DC here so accelerator all the way down accelerator pedal all the way down no change uh, a uh, foot off the accelerator pedal there yeah. foot off with the key on I hope you can see the check engine light there I don't know if you can make it out because the sun is uh, creating a lot of uh, okay key off wait five seconds Key on again, nothing happens. Try to crank the engine. We seem to have run out of fuel, that's another problem. But once that um, current, I'm seeing a scale of what's about two, uh, 1.5 volts peak to peak. Yes, 1.5. here on the amp clamp this is the throttle motor over here now these are coils but on the amp clamp I'm on the one millivolt equal 10 milliamps if one volt equals 10 milliamps that means here we are having the current is between zero, it's pulsing between zero uh, one millivolt equals ten milliamps. Are you trying to tell me because one point five volts would be one thousand five hundred uh, 1500 millivolts so if I have 1500 millivolts that would equate to that would equate to um, Fifteen thousand milliamps, which would be fifteen amps. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I need to bring out a multimeter on this. I I, I won't believe this. I need to put a multimeter on this. Uh, 
unless I'm reading this scale wrong. And I'm not seeing. I'm going to crank the engine. Run, 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 run. And cuts out. And that pulsation continues. So it is not, I think we've run out of fuel or something else. It is not the pulsing of the current that is causing the engine to shut down. The engine shuts down and then this continues. Okay, I need to bring out a multimeter to be sure on this. I am one handed here and the glare is a bit of a problem. Um, but I hope you can make out that what we actually have is around 93 millivolts. I'm going to turn the key off. With the key off, you can see we are back at pretty much zero. That's 2.5 millivolts. So what I will do is reset zero the amp probe. And it reads very near zero now. Actually, zero millivolts. So I'm going to crank the engine now. And you see, uh, we are now at back at around 85 millivolts. 85 millivolts. Now, uh, for every single millivolt, for every single millivolt, we have 10 milliamps. So if we have 85 millivolts, we have 850 milliamps and that would be um, 0 0.85 amps okay that's fine because uh, i was reading up the specs on this motor um, in the factory service manual and it said the current should uh, never it, it keeps drifting when the circuit is working properly but it shouldn't go above um, three amps so i think the motor um, i don't think it's shorted inside there i checked the resistance i haven't found out the spec but when i checked it it showed me 5.6 ohms i'm going to do some more research on this um, and confirm this is a good motor but from the current uh, reading i can see um, it's not shorted internally okay uh, good morning. We have here um, a very interesting case. Um, we've been everywhere with this vehicle uh, with regards to diagnostic approaches. Uh, it's uh, a 2002 uh, Toyota Noah minivan with a 1AZ FSE engine. Uh, in Toyota, that's a 2-litre engine, direct injection, um, coil on plug, ignition system, uh, no VVTI, um, the, it's a long story, I'll try to make it short. Uh, this video is going to be more of a narration. Um, the first part is going to be more of a narration and then I'll tell you what I've found is the issue with the, this vehicle. Customer complaint, vehicle mm -hmm. won't accelerate, uh, no response uh, to throttle input, or rather to accelerator pedal input. Remember, it's a drive-by wire. So, no uh, response to accelerator pedal input. She called the, the garage that saw it first. Somehow they managed to drive it to, to their workshop. And um, because it's a drive-by wire, 
the initial thought it uh, the issue is to do with the uh, throttle motor we swapped that no change in vehicle behavior um, they swapped computers at that point the vehicle wouldn't even idle you would crank it it runs uh, if you have your foot on the accelerator pedal as soon as you take it off it would stall so initially it was uh, a crank start uh, and run but without um, without acceleration now it became crank I don't know if you I want to call it start it didn't feel like because it, it, it did uh, the same symptoms when it when it was brought to us it was displaying the same symptoms if you didn't put your foot on the gas pedal it would um, run for maybe a second or two and then stall at that point they decided to swap um they say they swapped injectors they swapped coils um fuel pump of course it comes with its uh, regulator built in um and that was in a space of about 10 days between 10 days and two weeks and the customer then decided to bring the vehicle to us um, it was lifted here so and when it was brought to us they they had us uh, disassembled bits some of which they never put back so uh, my diagnostic path involved you know discovering what they hadn't put back together so but I did test uh, eventually I did test the um, I developed um, a plan of what I'm going to test of course I went straight oh I didn't mention that it keeps throwing a P a code a port code P1633 if you look it up for Toyota it uh, has something to do with the internal uh, ECM failure internal engine computer failure with respect to the throttle motor circuit and I think that's why the other garage decided to change the motor first. Anyway, uh, I didn't uh, go in that direction because I knew, first of all, that had failed, and two, I don't normally throw parts on a vehicle for just for for, for giggles. So um, I had to investigate this. So because it was uh, showing the P1633 supposedly related to the throttle motor malfunctioning. Or internally to the board of the engine computer uh, the functioning of the throttle motor was an issue I that's what that code meant I went for the throttle motor I proved it beyond reasonable doubt I um, checked the resistance specs checked the wiring there are no shorts to uh, the it has two control wires from the ECM no shorts uh, short circuit between them no open no shorting to ground no shorting to battery voltage so i concluded that wasn't the issue um this guy's uh, alarm is playing up anyway uh after all that and i i followed the circuit straight from the engine control module to be sure and i even actuated the throttle motor uh, using uh, a tool which I'll show you in future. I don't know if I've shown it to you in other videos. I normally use it to to power uh, injectors and in fact I used it again on this vehicle after testing it after using it to test the motor. I used it to test the uh, fuel pressure control solenoid on the fuel on the high pressure fuel pump remember this vehicle has two fuel pumps because it direct injection one in the tank one on the engine um, so I did check the intake air system vacuum 
it appeared to have uh, a vacuum leak because it was at idle it, uh, it had a high uh, idle rpm around 1200 rpm and then it was displaying on the map sensor it was displaying 45 uh, kpa and uh, ideal at idle for this engine i think the ideal uh, manifold uh, vacuum when it is or pressure when it is uh, idling should be about late 20s to early 30s i think that's normal for a warmed up engine ah anyway i didn't tell you i figured out eventually how to get the engine to run um you step on the accelerator pedal for just a little bit for a while so it will initially run at uh, higher rpms around 1800 2000 and then after a few minutes you take the foot off the pedal and when the engine warms up it will idle on its own that's something else i discovered so it means the problem was worse when it was cold and now that began to seem to me uh like um like uh, either uh, it could be a vacuum leak or it could be but had ruled out uh, a complete vacuum leak just because of although it was reading 45 kpa but remember the rpm was higher so maybe that was because the throttle motor was malfunctioning and it was uh, staying opening wider than it should at idle so i went away from that and uh, I checked the current ramps of the injectors and uh, that showed me they had good power, they had good ground and they were all even but the other symptom uh, on the scan tool it rarely went into closed loop but when it did it would show me the fuel trims were excessively negative like minus 20 uh, on the short term and maybe minus 17 on the long term that's extremely rich and that uh, remember I drew out the, man, uh, the map sensor the throttle position sensor the accelerator pedal position sensor the air intake system uh, throttle motor and now I got interested in the fuel pressure because the fuel trims were excessively negative now the fuel pressure sensor was reading uh, the voltage on it was at idle was reading uh, between 2.8 volts and uh, 3.6 or 3.5 thereabouts wow that was quite high fuel pressure in the rail for um, for this engine at idle so now that explained why it partially explained it explained why the exhaust fumes are reeking of uh, fuel um, it explained why the fuel consumption is very high it explained why it didn't want to start partially actually as you find out later uh, it partially explained why it didn't want to start, especially when cold. Now, I went over this system. I went over the pump, the uh, high fuel uh, pressure pump. Of course, the fact that it had a uh, high pressure in the fuel rail meant that the pump in the tank, the electronic pump, is fine. The mechanical pump on the engine now became my focus because if the fuel pressure regulating valve does not function very well we could get this issue i went through this unfortunately i'm narrating this because it has taken me uh, a couple of days of working on this vehicle on off i would come for one hour i didn't have a lot of time i'd come for one hour on one day maybe 30 minutes on another day um just like that until this morning anyway uh where was i 
Um, I I did uh, electrical tests on the pump, which showed me the pump was actually functional and the regulator was functional. I even tested it again with uh, that tool that I told you about that I use for uh, checking injectors and solenoids. It seems to be operating fine. Now, but I knew, I still knew the vehicle, the, uh, the pressure sensor, the story it was telling me, the fuel pressure sensor, the story it was telling me that the car is being extremely overfueled. Now, I had to work out why that is. So I went and did uh, some homework uh, about GDI the last time. I had to refresh my knowledge of the system. And one of the things I hadn't checked or thought about checking yet was timing. When I revised my knowledge of GDI systems, I realized uh, issues with timing can bring exactly the problem we are looking at. So this morning, uh, I'm on to, uh, I've already tested it. I know uh, the timing is off. I'm just going to show you how I did it. The timing, I think either the, because this engine has a chain, either the chain got stretched or something. This vehicle has uh, 176 nearly 176,000 kilometers on the clock now um, I think uh, with that kind of life the chain is probably stretched and it jumped mm. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. more than one more than a few teeth as I will show you so I also wanted to check VVTI realize um, for timing issues you mm -hmm. need to verify VVTI functionality as well this engine doesn't have VVTI uh, I, the next thing I was about to check was exhaust back pressure but it's a bit more difficult to do than checking for timing so I decided to do timing first and then I made a discovery and also remember I said this engine if you when you crank it you put your foot on the gas pedal it revs way up to like five six thousand rpm which is not very good uh when you, you you rev an engine like that immediately after start off start up but it's not good anyway uh it's doing that so uh, i use that to roll to rule out um uh rule out uh, excessive excess back pressure so now I will take you direct to the timing thing. I'm going to use, I'm using my oscilloscope to check for timing. Initially I wanted to look at the, I wanted to check timing by looking at the cam crank correlation, but I couldn't find any known good waveform. So the next thing I did is have my uh, amp clamp on the wire from the battery to the starter motor and then that's on channel 1 I'll show you that that's on channel 1 that's my oscilloscope here I don't know how well you can see that that's on uh, channel 1 which is uh, yellow orangish and then channel 2 which is blue is connected to the IGF they call it Toyota calls it the IGF this is a uh, view of the connectors to the engine control module and the IGF which is uh, ignition confirmation signal from the coils they all arrive on one wire all the signals from the four coils arrive on one wire so we can see them all on one wire um, it arrives at uh, e17 e17 pin e1717 which is here um, on, on the on the diagram so 
that's where channel 2 is connected so we can see those signals every time one of those coils uh, fires we shall see confirmation and then on channel 1 we are going to see um, you know the current waveform uh, going to the starter motor when we try to crank. I have disabled fuel so the vehicle will not start. Um, it does start uh, actually, especially if you keep your foot on the gas pedal. But if you don't keep your foot on the gas pedal, it starts and then stumbles, stalls, and uh, you won't get anywhere. If you keep your foot on the gas pedal, yes, it will um, run high RPMs. And then when it warms up, you can take your foot off the pedal slowly and it will keep running, idling on its own, but at high RPMs. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you quickly how I check for timing. Uh, let me make sure my amp probe is uh, turned on and zeroed. So I'm going to uh, attempt to crank the engine. Remember, it's not going to start. I'm just cranking it so that I get this waveform. It's not going to start, um, but we shall be able to see how far off the timing is. OK, ready? Uh, remember, I've disabled the fuel. I think I need to restart this uh, oscilloscope software because it seems to have gone to sleep. It's not updating. Oh, it's saying searching for device. Uh, let me just restart it. Add uh, disconnected the device, I think. Okay, so it is now connected. We still have our settings, so we are going to do our test again. So I think you can see it on the screen. I uh, saved this uh, screenshot. This uh, oscilloscope software can actually save the waveform, but I've been too lazy to learn how to do that, so what I do what I do is uh, take a snapshot of the waveform and uh, bring it to Word and read it now. You can see, I don't know how clearly you can see this on camera let me bring you closer I hope that is uh, better forgive the screen it's uh, it's a bit dirty full of dust it's in a garage environment and we have a lot of dust we are by uh, main road so apologies uh, for that but you can see that the each of these is a coil firing and that coil should be firing very near top dead center for that um, for that cylinder now these current ramps for the starter motor are representative of how much work the starter motor is doing so every time a cylinder is nearing top dead center um, the ramp will go up. When it goes away from that, as it goes away from top dead center, uh, on, uh, on, on, uh, after the compression stroke, um, the current ramp also goes down. So you can see, now if this is top dead center, 
and Spark is arriving here, clearly it is arriving uh, way before uh, notice. It's nowhere near top dead center. So we have uh, mechanical timing issues on this engine, and that is what is affecting this pump. That is what is keeping the fuel pressure high because uh, when I revise my knowledge of GDIs, these pumps uh, are controlled electronically by the computer. Uh, they are pulsed based off, um, based off the timing, based off the engine timing. So if it is off, even the fuel pressure regulator is going to be pulsed at the wrong time and we shall get all sorts of issues. This time we got very, very high uh, pressure in the rail, more pressure than we actually need in the rail. That's why this engine is uh, running rich. Basically, it explains all the issues. Uh, now, the other garage, this vehicle will have to be, the engine will have to be timed, retimed, and the chain changed. Uh, but the other, you know, here we don't do guesswork, we, we do research. We, this is stuff I got from the factory service manual, the pinout for the computer, so I'm not struggling under the engine bay looking for sensor X or all the motors, the throttle motors, everything. I tested them from here inside the vehicle. The engine computer is over there under the glove box. Um, that's, it makes my work easier uh, when I have Actually, I, I, it makes it almost impossible to troubleshoot if you don't have the right information. Now, the other garage went through changing engine computer, coils, all four of them, injectors. I wish you know how much work there is in changing, swapping injectors on this vehicle. It's almost a day's work because they are buried under the manifold and the ma that part of the manifold is toward the uh the firewall and it's very hard to get to um they changed the throttle motor they changed the fuel pump oh my god so all for timing issues um i think um that's uh, my conclusion on this I'll let the mechanical team take over the repair now. Thank you for watching.